Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel, and today we're gonna check out Endless OS. So I was going through my normal news sources that I do, trying to get a sense of the, the Linux community, the open source community. I do this daily because I love it. And I came across this article from It's Foss News. Amidst disagreement, Elementary co-founder quits and joins Endless OS. I was like, what is Endless OS? I had no idea. Now, obviously I knew about Elementary OS and I know there's some drama I don't know, there just seems to be some challenges going on with elementary OS team. Cassidy James joins Endless OS, which is great. I don't know what the deal is with the elementary OS, so I don't have any input on that. But what I did start to do is figure out what Endless OS is, and specifically, the he is joining the Endless OS Foundation, okay? And it says he is revealed that he is joining the Endless OS Foundation as a partner success engineer. Endless OS is a nonprofit organization with the aim to make computing accessible to all. Apart from the Debian-based Endless OS, it has developed several affordable computers. Cool. So I go to the Endless OS Foundation website to get educated on what this is. Our mission is to help all people and communities connect with technology. Okay, that's cool. Then they have uh, solutions designed for better computer access. We build technology and partnerships to help users. Offline communities and students get connected in 2022, regardless of income or location. And then they have some stats here about who still does not have access to the internet, who still doesn't have access to a computer. And it's much larger than you think. And as if you were watching this channel, you know, Technology is a big part of our lives, and it is interesting that some children don't have an opportunity or some people, some communities don't have an opportunity to grow. Maybe the next amazing programmer sitting there and they just need a device to grow and learn with it. I'm like, okay, this is cool. I really do like this. I'm going to learn more about it before I decide to support it more. But just from the reading that I've done here and a couple other places, I think this is a pretty cool way to heal the world and make it a better place, right? Nice, warm, fuzzy stuff. So you go here to the actual Endless OS webpage. It talks about the actual operating system here. And they have some learning resources, some school entrepreneurship and playing while learning. And then they have your download link here. You're able to download and make it go. So we're gonna take a look at it here. You know, there's two things about this. The ISO that you get is a 16 gigabyte ISO. Essentially, everything you need to be able to run this computer, if you don't have internet access, you can do. Every, you know, the encyclopedias, all the programs, all of it is available for you if you don't have internet access. So it was a large file. So let's go ahead and go here and let's take a look. So this is what I am greeted with when I booted it up for the first time. We haven't done the install process. We will go ahead and walk through this piece. We will show the install process. Then we will walk through what makes Endless OS unique. Here we go, English. They already got plenty of languages here. And you can try you know, running it from USB stick or reformat this computer with Endless OS. We are going to go ahead and install this on my virtual disk. I agree to erasing all my files and apps. And now it's going to install. All done, start using Endless. So we're greeted here with a what looks like a customized version of GNOME, which is cool and all. You've got some things down here on the bar. You've got your files, Chromium, Hack, App Center. You've got your system tray down here, which you are familiar with. Check it out. <laughs> the GNOME calendar and do not disturb and no notifications. And then your user set here with your social accounts, the help and power off and logging out. Go to search button up here, a couple of pages of applications. Once again, this is designed so that if you don't have internet connection, you can use this. So let's check out a couple of the pieces that are here. This hack is introducing children to coding. Now, 
Okay. One of my kids is, is definitely interested in computers. He's definitely interested in them. This might be a great introduction for him to learn how to code. Now I'm not going to review all of these pieces um, and walk through and learn how to code this way. But what I am going to do is at least show you some pieces to learn how to make something happen. You've got green, you've got an orange with two bars, and then you have red, which look, the command line, and the command line, and the command line. They're teaching them how to do use the command line. And there's more pieces here. That's very cool. Let it snow. Now we're about to hack the extension. All right. Go back to the extensions app. Okay. So here they are and what they were walking you through. And you get to change some of these pieces. And there's your cat. So now they're cats. <laughs> and how much the duration. And you can, I believe you can change it here. Or you can, let's change that to something ridiculous. And there we go. Now, do I want to sit there and watch this all day? No. What a cool way for a child to start to see. Look, they introduced us to a little text editor there. They introduced us to GNOME extensions and extensions. And that was a quick and easy way for someone like a kid to be able to start to learn how to navigate these things. I see this one with the command line. So I'm guessing they're gonna be able to walk kids through the command line as well. We can go back to the clubhouse. We can check out games and art and all of those pieces. And like I said, I'm not just walking through all of these pieces for us, but I did wanna see what this project was about. You have an, an encyclopedia here already, the full encyclopedia. I don't know if y'all remember, but as a kid, the encyclopedia, there used to be someone that would come by or you would go purchase this encyclopedia and it would just be these books. And it was kind of like, you know, very valuable information to get things before we had Google, you know? We have this coding education piece. You have CSS tutorials, HTML tutorials, Scratch. This is cool. So now I can go through and learn the basics of CSS. So it looks like no matter how old your kids are, you are going to be able to walk through with them and see how to do this, which is super cool. It doesn't matter what age your kid is, you're going to have something for them to grow and learn with. You know, are my, you know, I have some younger children and some older children. The younger ones probably wouldn't care too much about the coding education yet, but they have creation here. Look, there's a Blender tutorials on how to use Blender. Maybe I should take the Blender tutorial, you know? This is great, first steps, learn how to do this. They walk you through it. We're not just talking about learning math, which everyone should learn math. You've got algebra, arithmetic, calculus, all those, those pieces, geometry right here. Not only do you have that encyclopedia, you have biology and learning about animals. And some of these things are, you know, look, they're wiki pages, okay? But they're said in a way and already downloaded here for you to learn. If you don't have network connection, you can learn. If I want to learn about Madagascar, I can click and learn about Madagascar. And as we all know, knowledge is power. We all know knowledge gets us to wherever we are trying to go. We just have to know where we're going, right? Even things like healthy teeth, budget stuff. Look, I know this may not be exciting for some of you. For me, my kids having this accessible to them and other children around the world having this accessible to them. Um, other people who don't have internet connection accessible for them to learn to work in a computing environment is great. Now they do have Chromium here. I am connected to the internet. They have an app center here that is set in this way. Let's take a look. Software, oh, it's their app center, okay. Let's take a look at seeing what updates are available. They have automatic updates on you. Get a new update here. Look, you can learn how to cook. There's this situation here, how to. Oh look, sports. How to become a soccer goalie. I mean, seriously, 
This is absolutely amazing. Everything from simple things like sanitation and making sure you have healthy teeth, making sure kids are engaged in learning through having a good time. Tank Warriors, ooh, that looks fun. How to create, these are apps you know well. GIMP, Inkscape, Blender, Audacity. These are things you know, right? Drawing tutorials, check this out. You have a kid who wants to learn how to draw a unicorn, they can draw a unicorn. How about drawing a dragon character? That's cool. If I want to search for encyclopedia, there it is, there's the encyclopedia. And now essentially it's a search button and I want to learn about tigers. There's four tigers and <laughs> I didn't, there's a lot more tigers than I realized that would show up, but that's cool. Now you also have walking through science experiments. Look, this is a Debian based GNOME distribution, but everything a person needs to grow and learn and get educated is here without needing a network connection. And whether you have kids that are young in kindergarten age or you have kids that are in high school, whether they need options to learn how to code or learn how to use Blender or learn how to do HTML, LibreOffice, how to budget. It's all here. Like it's all here. Whether you have internet connection or not, you have it here. Now there's a couple other interface pieces I do want to quickly check. You have, you know, the GNOME file manager. What does this button do? It just shows the desktop and the desktop always has these applications up. And for children, I think that's probably pretty great. What did we learn from Endless OS? <laughs> You know, this is a specific and a very niche distribution. If you are a big Linux person, you should be supporting this in the sense that providing free and open source software to anyone in the world is definitely something we should be supporting, right? It's definitely something that we want to have happen. And Endless OS and the Endless OS Foundation is trying to make that happen by trying to give hardware and an operating system with every learning piece you could ever want sitting there for you and for kids and for people who haven't had that opportunity. I would love to hear that one day, one of the most amazing developers started off in Endless OS or you know, someone who didn't have that opportunity now has the opportunity. That's what I mean. Someone who didn't have the opportunity to learn how to code and was given an opportunity. And that's what something like this provides. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you later.